Hi there, it's Clarence Speaks and welcome to another video. Mac users, are you been hit by ransomware? Amazon have been busy, they've got six, that's six new devices that are being released. And is there going to be a bendable Samsung phone? That's what's coming up next. So if you like this content, click that subscribe button and don't forget to click that bell and that way any time I put a new video online, you will get notified. Okay, before we get into the video, I just want to ask you a question or two. I've added music onto my recent videos. Is that something you like? Do you find it irritating? I want to know. Some people like it, some people don't. So I appreciate it. If you can let me know in the comments, do we want music or not? And also, I've been doing slightly different videos, or at least I'm trying to, this one included. If you like that sort of thing, if you want more than that, let me know as well. Or do you just want me to carry on with Cody? I'm not going to stop doing Cody. I'm still going to do Cody as well as other video streaming videos and tutorials. So this is a story from Mashable UK website. I'll put the link to it in the description. I'll put the link to all the websites that I've visited in this video. Now it says some Mac users are getting hit with ransomware and here is what to do. So what it is is hackers have hacked into iCloud and they've obtained a bunch of iCloud usernames and passwords and then using them to remotely lock people's computers. The hackers are demanding $50 in Bitcoin in exchange for unlocking the new devices. So according to this website, if it happens to you, the only thing you can do is you take it into an Apple store and they will verify your identity to gain access to it. Otherwise, the only way to get back control your machine is to perform a hard reset, which basically means you would lose all the data on your computer. How did the hackers gain access? Well, they're saying here that they're beginning to gain access to the number of people's usernames and passwords. They're speculating whether it's through phishing scams, fake virus alerts, or people using weak passwords. Always have a really strong password. That's my first bit of advice. Now what it says here is if you haven't been hacked yet, you may want to turn off Find My Mac for your Mac computers and be sure to enable the two-factor authentication on your Apple account. Now, is this real? Is, do you have any idea whether this has just been made up or not? I'd like to know your opinion on this because one thing I do not want to do is turn off Find My Mac. It's there for a reason. I like the fact that I know if, 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 if ever it was stolen, then I would be able to trace it. So I don't want to turn that off. Is that a ploy? Let me know. Is this made up? I'd like to hear your opinion on it. But yes, I would definitely make sure the two-factor authentication on your Apple account is switched on. So Amazon have been very, very busy. They released six new devices. First one I'll talk about is, it was the all new Amazon Echo. It's the second edition generation. And I would say it looks to me as if it's gonna be on the same sort of scale as the Google Home. Certainly not for price wise, but I would say the height wise and size wise, but it's only getting in it 90 pounds, 89.99. I haven't had a chance obviously to see any reviews on this. It's not available until the 31st of October, but it certainly looks a great wee addition. It's available in six different looks, although four of them are 10 pounds dearer. And it's definitely an attempt by Amazon uh, to introduce more products that will tie in with your home furnishings so you can have one in every room basically as opposed to one big metal unit. The Amazon Echo is now called the Echo Plus and they've come up with a new colour which is silver and as far as I know it's pretty much just the same as the previous generation. The Echo Dot stays the same. They've also released the Echo Show at least in the UK although it's been out for, in the States for a wee while now. What is the Echo Show? Well, the Echo Show, as far as I know, it's got your Alexa capabilities, so you'll be able to do everything you can do on your Echo Dot or your Echo, but you can also do, obviously, you've got a screen there, so you can do video calling, you can call others who have the Echo Show device, and when you play music, you'll be able to see the artwork. It says it's got powerful room-filling speakers with Dolby processing for crisp vocals and extended bass response, so it'll be interesting to see exactly what the music sounds like from it. So the screen can also be used as a baby monitor or as checking security cameras. 
and you can also watch video clips. Also what Amazon introduced, but they didn't introduce it in the UK, is the Echo Spot, which is just what we were talking about before. It's the Echo Show, but in a smaller format, where you can have it along the same sort of lines as your Echo Dot. So I'd imagine you could have one in every room. It's been marketed as, as an alarm clock, but like the show, the spot can be used to make video calls. It has built-in sound, but it also has a line-out, so you can be connected to external speakers via cable or Bluetooth. So again, exactly the sort of thing that you would have with your Echo Dot, except you've got a screen on it, and it will cost $130, or would expect it to cost of the same price over here in the UK. And we've also got an Echo Connect, which basically turns your Echo into a voice control speakerphone and it's coming, as I say, early 2018. So simply, what is an Echo Connect? Well, an Echo Connect, you can connect with your Echo device, your Echo Dot, and you can ask Alexa to call anyone and use your home phone number with either landline or VoIP. So it says here that friends and family recognize the call answer your home phone on your Echo from across the room so you can easily talk to anyone hands-free when you're busy making dinner or away from the phone. Pretty much what you can be doing on any speaker phone but this time you can do it voice activated. And last but not least the all-new Fire TV with 4K HDR. So this is a replacement for the Amazon Fire TV that we talked about in an earlier video. Now, when I talked in that video, there was supposed to be two devices. One was supposed to be a Cube and one was supposed to be like this. It looks like the Chrome. It looks as if the Cube one hasn't come to fruition, but it will be only getting this. This is your direct replacement for your Amazon Fire TV. So, what do I think of this product? On the whole, it looks like a cheaper alternative to the Fire TV because they're taking things away. There's no SD card anymore, no USB, and no gaming facility either. Uh, they've dropped that, they've decided that that's something that you don't need anymore. So if you use games on your Amazon Fire TV, uh, you'll need to keep your old one because you won't be able to do it on this, or certainly not to the same capabilities. So it's the same as you've had before with Amazon Fire TV. It's smaller, but this time you've got 4K in HDR. Before you had 4K at 30 frames per second, now you get 4K at 60 frames per second. And it pretty much does everything that your old Fire TV did. It comes with remote control as the other one did, but this time you can connect it to your Amazon Dot, so you can actually just use voice controls as well, as opposed to lifting up the remote control. And of course, you can also use it as a smart home device as well. So there is the specs. It's a little bit better than your Fire TV stick. That is for sure. It's got 2 gig of RAM and 8 gig of internal storage, but there's no way to expand it. But this time, it has support for Dolby Atmos, which you didn't have before. You do have free cloud storage for all your Amazon content, but you had that before anyway. Is this a step up? Is this what you were expecting or were you expecting a little bit more? I think I was expecting a little bit more to be honest. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if you're going to be buying one. I thought I was going to be buying one, but now I'm not so sure. I think I might just hold off. And now, is Samsung going to be releasing a Galaxy X? Now, the Galaxy X is supposed to be the bendable phone. I've seen it in different formats. I've seen different pictures of it online. It's a story that just will not go away. It's supposed to be getting released early next year or towards the middle of next year. It says here foldable phones are coming. It's only a matter of time. And this is six years in the making. There's all different kind of pictures of it. There's also a link online to a very nice but very cheesy advert. It says it's been hosted by quite a few production problems, but it's something that Amazon are very, very keen on promoting. They look as if this will be the future as a bendable phone. And this is a story that certainly won't go away. It came up in 2009. That was the picture there, the folding phone concept. So, so this is something that I'm going to stay tuned to if it ever changes. I'm going to, certainly going to mention it in my channel in the future. So that's it for another video. If you like this kind of content, please let me know. Leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this. Let me know about the music in the video, whether you like it or you, you don't. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. As ever, bye-bye. 
If you're looking for a VPN, then I recommend IP Vanish. It's the one that I use. Uh, this is the, how much it costs. If you want to sign up to IP Vanish and you want to help this channel in the process, I've got an affiliate link in the description. If you click that, I get a little bit of commission um, and no extra cost to yourself, and it's the one way to help the channel. Okay, you don't have to do it, there's no pressure, but this is the one that I use, IP Vanish, and it works really well for me.